Have you ever seen Darren Aronofsky's film Pi? I think it's a really good lesson for those of us who like to see patterns in the world and that especially mathematical ones. And it kind of should give us pause to, to say, you know, maybe it's not a great idea to constantly seek, be seeking patterns in the world because we're going to find them. So on today's episode of Life's Potluck Buffet, I'm going to talk a little bit about the problem with trying to find mathematical patterns all around you in the world and spirals and sunflower seed heads and the number of bees in a beehive and, well, things like that. So stick around for today's episode of Life's Potluck Buffet. I'm John Paulus. Thanks for joining me. If you're enjoying Life's Potluck Buffet, please subscribe. And if you've already subscribed, thank you so much. If you have a Brave browser, you can now contribute basic attention tokens to Life's Potluck Buffet with John Paulus on YouTube. Thank you for your support, and thank you, as always, for listening. If you're like me, somewhere in your browsing life or, you know, in your film watching or book reading or just life, you've maybe in a classroom, you've come across the idea that All of nature and all of the beautiful creations of human beings in addition to nature are um, kind of bound by or enhanced by some sort of mathematical, mathematically detectable proportion, Uh, whether it's a spiral or the ratio between elements of things. And the spiral is the most common drawing you'll see laid upon the Taj Mahal, the Mona Lisa, somebody's face, you know, just human human artistic production. And also um, in the spirals in nature always get like, Put out there as oh, this is the this is the this is going to show you that there's this you know uh, special uh, golden ratio that is everywhere around us and informs everything and so that's why I brought up that movie by Darren Aronofsky because the main character in that movie uh, that's kind of their outlook and it well doesn't end well. And I think that's a good warning for us because when we look for patterns in nature and in our human artistic production, whether it's a poem or whether it's a, a, a building or whether it's, you know, whatever it is, we're going to find them. And that doesn't mean that there aren't patterns that tend to be more common, but it also doesn't mean that everything is based on a golden ratio or a sequence of numbers and the ratio of those numbers specifically and the most famous ones are what are called fibonacci numbers what are fibonacci numbers well well first of all what's why fibonacci fibonacci is not the guy's name who um, popularized these numbers, or well, he didn't even really popularize them. A, a guy, a Frenchman named Luca, is the one who really popularized the idea that these were Fibonacci numbers. But anyway, the the person is uh, who who um, Luca named this sequence after in his work is a person Leonardo of Pisa uh, or Leonardo Bonacci, and. Apparently, somewhere along the lines, he became known as uh, Leonardo Filius Bonacci, which means son, Filius is son in Latin, it's a son of Bonacci, and then someone just decided to call him Fibonacci, which, I, you know, I, I have a feeling it's probably an abbreviation of Filius, is F-I period, Bonacci, and then people are like, oh, his name's Fibonacci. Interestingly enough, his father's name was apparently Guglielmo, so I guess it should have been Fibonacci. Guglielmo, which doesn't sound good either. Okay, so what's special about this whole Fibonacci business is, is that Leonardo of Pisa, what he what he did was talk a lot about a particular sequence of numbers that may have been well known in the tradition of Indian mathematics uh, since uh, maybe even 
600 BC, but we don't fully know the, the origins of it there, where you have, um, and, and that'll be interesting because that the, 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 we have incl- an inkling of why the, these numbers were important in that tradition, and it has to do with poetry. So I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But just to give you a sense, the Fibonacci sequence is um, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, and so forth. And you could see that what happens is it's the addition of the number that precedes um, and then the to- sum of those numbers is the next number. So let's just start with one. So one plus zero is one, and then one plus the number that came before it in the um, sequence, which is one, is two, and then two plus the number that came before it, which was one, is three, and then three plus the number that came before it is five, right, because two is the number that came before three, and then five plus the number that came before it, which is three, is eight, and you get it, and the next number is 13. And this can go on forever. And what Fibonacci did that got this into the realm of biology is he came up with a calculation of um, the generations of rabbits based on um, based on his you know his ideas of what how that worked and an idealized um, version of that so that you know you, you have generations that follow a pattern and the pattern that they followed was that sequence of numbers that I just talked about. And so I, I think this is really where this entered into the idea that all of nature um, just basically was replaying the Fibonacci sequence over and over again, just on repeat. But I, l- let's just jump to this point. It's not. But it is a pretty common set of numbers in nature. So you can find it. And this is where we get back to the pie thing, where, yeah, you're going you're gonna to find it a lot in nature, but you're also going to find it not a lot in nature. And that's where the interest is, because it's, it's not the thing that happens regularly that's interesting. It's the thing that doesn't happen regularly that's interesting. And so a group uh, of um, people did a study where they actually counted what is called the parastiche of a sunflower head. So the Fibonacci structure of the sunflower is an old trope. That's that's like uh, people say that all the time, and you could probably find a lot of stuff on that. Now, what they're talking about when they talk about parastiche is the so there are these spirals that um, emanate from the center of the sunflower. Um, and uh, see, we're getting into spirals, so that's that tells you we're we're starting to get into this kind of Fibonacci and also golden ratio category because the Fibonacci sequence, when you when you divide any two of the larger numbers of the Fibonacci sequence, you um, get a get a number that approaches the irrational number, which means it has like you know no basically no end to after the decimal point that is the number of the represented by the golden ratio and the golden ratio is basically the ratio between a larger square and a smaller rectangle that has one of the sides that equal the, one of the sides of the square but not the short side of the rectangle the long side is the same length as the square and So that, and that's been known since ancient times. Uh, So that's, that's nothing, that's nothing new. And in numerals, uh, in decimals, the, the golden ratio is about 1.618033, et cetera, et cetera. And that's an approximation of what the golden ratio is, which is uh, the, the Fibonacci numbers um, kind of um, get closer to that number as you go along, as, you, as they get larger and larger. So it approaches the golden ratio. And since ancient times, 
that golden ratio and golden rectangle and so forth have consciously been used as models for things. So you're go- you're definitely going to find it in architecture and things like that. But the, but that's because the people were aware of it. But back to the sunflower. So the uh, it means the basically the parallel spirals that go all the way around the sunflower head. And if you um, count the number of spirals in any given sunflower head, more often than not, it, they're going to be a Fibonacci number. But that's why... I, that's why I said it's not really a great idea to look for these patterns because, as I said, more often than not. And this study that uh, was done in 2016 counted a lot of sunflower heads. And just to give you a sense, most of the sunflower heads they found and spirals that they counted were in those heads were a Fibonacci number. But there were also a lot that were not Fibonacci numbers. And in fact, there were numbers that were Fibonacci times two. There were numbers that were Fibonacci minus one. That was a really, that was one they really keyed in on because they found that the Fibonacci minus one one occurred a lot and they were, you know, that's another one. Fibonacci plus one. And, and that Fibonacci minus one occurred a lot more than the Fibonacci plus one, like a statistically significant amount of times more. So that they were interested in that. And see, this is why the it's it's more interesting when you don't run into a Fibonacci number rather than when you do, because yeah, a decent number are gonna have a Fibonacci number, but when they don't, well, that's an interesting thing. There was a, a, a there were a bunch that had a Luca number and named after the French mathematician who who talked a lot about the Fibonacci sequence and came up with his own sequence. Which again, when you do the when you do when you tile the numbers in the sequence in a certain way, you cre- can then and then connect their um, outer corners. You, you create a spiral. Uh, in the same way that you do with the Fibonacci sequence, just a different spiral. Because, well, when you tile things together and connect their outer corners, you get a spiral. So that's not unexpected. But the Luca spiral looks a little bit different to my eye. It looks a little bit flatter than the Fibonacci spiral, which is much more, which it seems a little kind of more circular, even though it's not circular, but it has more of that feel. So there were a number that were um, Luca numbers from the sequence of numbers that Luca created. Now, this is, and I said when Luca created, I, this is the, this is the, the, we now run into the issue of the sequences and patterns in nature, is that when we're creating numbered patterns, they're probably going to, you're going to find them for sure. And if you create one that is based on something like the Fibonacci sequence, y- you have basically a really good chance of finding that in nature because and and some people have talked about this and I don't think anybody's gone so far as to try to show it but you, you when you have cell division uh, you know you have one cell and then one becomes another one and then that's two and then you have just the same way that Fibonacci, Um, show, you know, had in a kind of what they call idealized population of rabbits that reflected his numbers because that's how things divide or multiply in nature. Um, And at some point, uh, it kind of just makes sense because you're adding numbers in ways that nature adds to itself. And so you're going to find that you run into that number a lot. It just makes sense. But it doesn't mean there's anything special about the number. It's just you're going to run into it a lot, and that's nice. But you're also going to run into a lot of things that don't fall into that pattern, as the people who did the study about the sunflower heads did. And it's kind of interesting because every time there's uh, somebody looks into Fibonacci numbers and tries to find predecessors, um, especially in the um, Indian tradition, 
you'll find that in the world of poetry is where these numbers were important because the uh, because poets and people who studied poetry in that tradition were trying to find words that fit into certain patterns based on one and two syllables and the ratio of one syllable words to two syllable words. So they they created that same sequence and probably create ran into the golden ratio as well because of not of the nature of nature but because of the nature of numbers and the nature of geometry. So when we see the Fibonacci sequence everywhere or we see the golden spiral everywhere, what we're looking at is the nature of math rather than the nature of nature, which is much messier than math, which is pretty messy also when you get down to the real nitty-gritty part. So let's ask the cards. Oh, wait, and maybe we'll draw a Fibonacci number. That'll be great. So cards, we want a Fibonacci number. Let's see what we can do. Yellow lemons, blue dumplings, magenta noodles. Cards, tell us some things. I kind of hope it isn't a Fibonacci number because then we will... Oh, it's Passions for Hot 28, is that? Oh, no, it's not. All right, here we go. It's 33, card 33. Is card, is 33 a Fibonacci number? No, 34 is a Fibonacci number. So, oh, it's Fibonacci minus one, which those, remember those people who were studying the sunflower heads found that that was a, an interesting data point where you had Fibonacci minus one. So here we, here we have it. So card 33 is call on a friend. Ask someone present to say what they perceive your strengths to be and if they would be willing for you to say what you think their strengths are. If there's no one present, then just talk to a friend when you have the chance. And I'll talk to you when you have the chance tomorrow on Life's Public Buffet. (laughs) 